Welcome back to another new Verse Pro episode. This is gonna be a quick one to show you things that you like in a deal. This has a lot of things I like and two things that I don't like, but I'm gonna point out those two things that I don't like towards the end. You might, by the time we get there, figure it out. But first, Jack, temperature check. What's the temperature right now? 98, so welcome to Sacramento. It is a little warm. Well, I didn't dress for 98, so let's get inside. Fortunately, the AC's on. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna point out, so I'm gonna take you right over into the kitchen, and obviously, we've got a lot of beautiful cabinetry here. By now, you've watched my channel enough to know that these are going to be an easy paint. Why are they going to be such an easy paint, though, as well, compared to replacing them? Look at how they go all the way up to the ceiling. These are a larger cabinet. You got yourself new cabinets. Now you're fixing the drywall. You've got a gap. You're thinking about new trim molding. There's so much more that goes into replacing the cabinets that turns into such a headache that every time I see people tear out cabinets like this, I get so sad. Some people get nervous. The noobs get really nervous. They're like, oh, but there's wallpaper here. I'm like, well, then you scrape it off. People are like, oh, but that's work. And that's why there's money to be made in real estate is because the noobs are worried about doing work. And it's really not that big of a deal. Even these countertops here, these are pretty nice. It's obviously going to be very tempting to just yank these out and go for a, a stone quartz sparkly white countertop or something like that. You might be able to get away with just glazing these because they will look almost as beautiful. And when you glaze these, the pro is going to say, we're getting rid of the grout lines anyway because we're glazing right over them. Really what you want to do here, the pro is going to do, is sizzle up these appliances. These appliances are straight out of the early 90s. And not only the cooktop, it's actually in remarkable condition for how old it is, remarkable condition. Uh, same thing over here with the oven and the microwave. But what a pro likes to do is look at the condition that the appliances are in. And usually they're a tell for how much the owner actually cared for the property. When you've got an, a, a, you know, a 31, two year old appliance and it still looks this phenomenal, you know you've got a pretty good quality owner who's taking care of the project. And that's what a pro wants to look for. You want something, I mean, look at this. This is 30 something years old. And it, it, look at that, July, 1990. And you're in pretty clean, solid condition for 32 years old. I bet you it still functions. Even this, that's not bad for 32 years old. Uh, this is a little much, you know, but you know, that's what happens when ovens get used. But again, it's not dinged up, it still probably functions, but we would get rid of them. Uh, trash compactors, frequently an easy way to update these since they do break all the time. I wouldn't like to rent a property out with a trash compactor anymore. A uh, pro is gonna turn this into a smaller wine cooler. Uh, they're super inexpensive. You just get one that's that size, slide it in, plug it in and call it a day. These sinks, a lot of noobs look at these and say, oh, it's ruined, oh no, what are we gonna do? We're gonna rip it out. It's a headache. This is an undermount. For you to get rid of the undermount, you're probably going to ruin the countertop now. So it's always in real estate. The more you do, the more you destroy usually. Uh, so here's just another case where as you're glazing the countertop, you glaze this, <laughs> you know, take the faucet off, glaze it, reinstall the faucet. It's actually in great shape, this faucet. I don't even know that you need to replace it. Especially if you get stainless steel appliances, you got the chrome. I don't know. You could maybe update it if you wanted to, but not super necessary. Big fan of updating, personally, all of the ivory to uh, white. Just makes the property feel more modernized. I'm also not a fan of the mini blinds. A lot of people into mini blinds. I do think these scream low-class rental, and so we're gonna get rid of those. We would go with something like a two-inch faux wood louvered blind. Uh, can lights here, easy to replace the trim sets on these. They're screw-in cans and not the plug-in fluorescents that are a horrible nightmare. These would be easy to, for you know, 100 bucks, and and an hour of time, replace all of these with a new LED trim kit. Obviously replace the other electrical. Now this slider, new, looks fantastic. These are expensive. Installed, you're probably 1800 bucks on something like this. So the fact that it's already done, excellent. Now, a lot of people say, oh, but Kevin, the backyard's not as big as I want. And I look at it and go, I'm not living there. I don't want to maintain it. And as a real estate pro, less of a backyard, the better. Yeah, hard to mess up the top over here. It's retaining wall and concrete, or, you know, and, and, and rock, and you don't have that much grass. So even if the tenants destroy it all, we're looking at maybe what six hundred bucks worth of sod. Okay, maybe a little bit more, but uh, this is not that bad. Worst case scenario, it's within the realm of a security deposit. Imagine if we had a ten thousand square foot lot back here. It was all grass. There's no way a tenant security deposit would cover that if they were to kill the grass and were responsible for 
uh, the landscape, which personally, this is a tenant's responsibility. I'm not coming to their backyard. I don't even want to bother them in, in their backyard all the time. So, uh, you know, obviously this, this molding over here, uh, dated, easy to update. Uh, it does take some effort, but this is really a paint job here. Now, uh, same thing everywhere you go, but it's all good quality, great condition. You'll see the same thing upstairs. You do have some wear and tear over here, but none of this wear right here. Jack, careful, can you get out of the way for a second there? None of this wear right here, Jack, you see that? It probably comes from the water spilling over, see it on both sides over here, or you don't have that over here. Uh, none of this has, has gotten to the point where it's actually destroyed uh, the cabinetry or done, uh, you know, damaged it or otherwise. They actually even put this linoleum sheet down to protect the cabinet uh, here, which, I mean, again, it's just a sign of an, uh, this is an owner that I would want to buy from. Uh, a pro looks and says, I'm, I'm not just buying a property, I'm buying the owner. Uh, and this is fantastic. Some damage over here could be bonded. That's no problem. Let's take a quick peek upstairs. And then keep in mind, what are those two things that I don't love yet? We're going to reveal those in just a moment. But we'll run upstairs quickly and give you an explanation of maybe how to evolve a couple things here. The first is these guys, I'm going to, uh, and people hate it when I say this, but nobody expects central vacs anymore. It's a central vacuum cleaner. If you're not familiar with what that is, you basically have a vacuum in your garage generally. And when you plug it in, it sends a little signal, turns it on, and all you carry around is the hose and the actual vacuum part rather than the canister. That all goes to a canister in the garage. However, most of them are broken. And if it's there and advertised that the house has it and the tenant is expecting it, then you have to pay to maintain it as the landlord, assuming the tenant isn't breaking it. But these break all the time, not necessarily the tenant's fault. So what would I do? Cover this up with a blank plate? House doesn't have central vac. I would not introduce uh, uh, the, the, to the tenant that this is included in the rent, or I might not cover it. Well, I'd probably cover it with a blank plate because this, um, this ivory is gross. Uh, but I might say, Central vac included without warranty, or if tenant wants to use it, it's, it's on them, whatever. Maybe that. So, re But replace it with a white, but forget about it. I would not warranty this. It's not expected. Nobody really uses them anymore these days. So something to keep in mind. Now, coming into the master, you can see the carpets pulled through uh, to the master. Obviously, this is something you probably create a transition uh, coming into the wet areas of the bathroom. You can replace the linoleum. Really, if you want to go inexpensive here, you could replace this whole area with new linoleum. Now, a lot of noobs get mad at me when I say that. They're like, oh my God, Kevin, how could you say new linoleum? That stuff is disgusting. The new linoleums that you can get today actually look like real tile. And I could get this whole room probably linoleumed for like 350 bucks. Under 500, it would be my expectation. If I got a bit of over $500, I'd be pissed. And I can't tile this room for that. Uh, this, this would probably cost somewhere around 1500 bucks to tile. And I'd like that extra thousand bucks in my pocket, not in the floor that nobody's really going to notice a difference in anyway. Uh, so big deal. I'd rather spend money on something like these old light fixtures and replacing that old stuff. Right, Chad? Isn't that crooked? You even know how to turn that on, bro? Try it. Let's see if you can get it. And that's old school style. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's gonna get rid of that old crap. <laughs> so anyway, uh, okay. So uh, I'm gonna reveal the two things I dislike. I mean, so far uh, everything else is pretty consistent. The bathroom much the same as the master. So what are the two things that I don't like about this property? Well, they painted everything already. I would have loved this property without the paint job they did. They actually painted right over wallpaper that used to be right here, which looks a little janky. It's not the biggest of deal, but a little bit janky. Uh, removing this wallpaper can create a lot of damage to the drywall. Uh, but uh, they didn't do all the trim molding, all the wood. They left that. They did the easiest parts. They did the stinky carpet they got rid of, and they painted. That's You could get so much good value out of that. So I'm bummed that they did that, but they're smart for doing that. They are smart owners for doing that. But as a buyer, I'm like, dang it. Now, quick market update. I want to give you about something that is uh, happening within the last three weeks, right after I mentioned to you. If you haven't yet, check out the programs on building your wealth down below, where you can learn zero to millionaire real estate investing, everything I know about real estate investing, all in a concise, packaged, organized manner. 
do-it-yourself property management so you can learn what to do and not do with tenants. Uh, that's just not, that's not only me, but it's also uh, my mother-in-law who's been a property manager for 40 years, which is phenomenal content. Uh, and then of course, the other courses on building your income and your stock portfolio, check those out, link down below. So what do we know about market? What do you got, sir? Want to pitch the coupon? He's reminding you about the coupon link down below. Uh, final thing is uh, market starting to see inventory rise. This is the expectation we've been looking for. It means we're getting close. So we're very excited. Just the change within the last three weeks per the agents that we're working with right now. So let's keep moving on and find another new verse for a video.